Hello, welcome to the Artist Chat Room. My name is Natasha from Natasha Castellan Art. The Artist Chat Room is a place where we talk about the business of art. And this week, actually this few weeks, I've been talking a lot to a lot of artists who have been in lockdown due to COVID-19. And many of them were saying how much they've really enjoyed the lockdown for them, for them personally. They've just enjoyed getting into their studio, getting into their space, and being able to just create without distractions around them. Some of them have produced new bodies of work, produced things that they wouldn't have otherwise done. And it's been amazing. I know personally, I have really enjoyed it. I have been one who have a lot of things that I often have to go to, a lot of events, a lot of places, and not having to go to them has been absolutely liberating for me as an artist. And I know they've talked about that too. And they've talked about how it must be like that for the old masters, you know, Da Vinci, Renoir, Michelangelo, Cabaggio. You know, for them, they wouldn't have had these rushes, things that they had to go to. They wouldn't have had to go here and there. And it must have been like that. They could have worked in their solitude, in their special place, <laughs> creative place, to create their works. Well... This is what we're going to talk about today. In fact, Wendy Manzo, a good friend of mine, who's also a great artist, sent me an amazing blog this week, and it was by Mark McGuinness. And Mark wrote this 10 years ago, so relevant today. Seven essential steps to creating your content masterpiece. Now, which one of us doesn't want to create a masterpiece, hey? He has seven steps for creating a masterpiece. And what makes him the expert on knowing how to do it? Well, like me, he's no expert at all, but he looks to the experts. And he's a writer, so his creativity is about writing. But he looked at Sebastian Bach, a musician, a composer, who is an absolute giant amongst the classics. We are listening to his music today still. Um, it might not be your cup of tea, but certainly there are orchestras that are still playing it. People are still listening to it. No one can deny that his work is masterpiece work. It's amazing. And Mark McGuinness examines his life and how he does it. And Mark starts off this article, which I really enjoy, how he just imagines Sebastian Bach, you know, leisurely taking his time writing this beautiful music you know knowing it's going to be genius and he writes it and he takes his time and he does it well and then he um, has a performance and it's played and oh the audience are adoring him bravo bravo bark again more encore and he plays it here and there and audiences are just adoring what he's done it wasn't like that for Sebastian Bach. In fact, Sebastian Bach was constantly producing new music. He was, let me have a look here, he was an employee of the St. Thomas Church in Leipzig. It was a prestigious but demanding role where he produced 60 cantatas a year. And a cantata is a piece of music written to sacred text. So 60 a year. He worked there for five years. So that's 300 cantatas. And Mark said in his research on Bach, he found that Bach was producing on average 20 pieces of finished sheet music a day. So he composed it and he wrote it out ready to be performed 20 pieces of sheet music a day and i don't know if any you artists know much about sheet music but it's like it's not like piano with two lines it's like this is what the trumpets are doing this is what the brass this is what the percussions this is what the violins are doing it's big really big and it was amazing how much he produced and in fact Far from it being a hindrance to him being producing so much music, it was an advantage to him. And researchers have shown that the rate of hit and misses 
to creating great work and average work is actually the same whether you create 300 cantatas in five years or if you create three cantatas in five years. So imagine if the rate of hit and misses is 50%. So 50% of 300 cantatas is 150 phenomenal works. 50% of three cantatas is only one and a half. So what I'm trying to say here today is if you want to create a masterpiece, you've got to do a lot of art. Paint every day, paint and paint, create and create. And that's how you're going to create your masterpiece. I remember years ago, my husband was asked to be a photographer at a wedding. And we're talking about years ago, before digital cameras, like 30 years ago. And he bought like lots and lots of rolls of film and he took so hundreds of photos. And his theory was, if he took enough, there'd be great photos in there. And the people came back to him saying, wow, these are phenomenal. And they had friends asking him, would he do their wedding photos? But my husband just wasn't interested in that. He just did it as a favor. And and the, the point is that if you do enough, you create enough, you will come across, not come across, you will create great works. You will create those masterpieces. And I would encourage you to read Mark McGuinness's article because he talks about, um, he looks into Bach and Bach's habits and his daily um, routine and how he created these amazing works. And I would encourage you to find something that's going to work for you. What is it going to work for you? What on a daily basis will work for you? You know, you don't have to be like Bach. We don't have to compare ourselves to another artist, but we can take inspiration from them. So what would work for you on a daily basis or on a weekly basis? Plan it out. Make sure you have those steps so that you've got those opportunities to create those great works. Years ago, uh, my kids did music and in the music room, uh, at their high school there was this poster and it says the difference between an amateur and a professional is 15 minutes a day and when the kids were younger I used to make sure you know you got to get that 15 minutes in or if they said they didn't feel like it that's fine but you have to do 15 minutes of course that 15 minutes always went a bit longer and that's what I'll say to you today now I think you should do more than 15 minutes a day but if you don't feel like it, then get out a pencil, get out your pastels, get out your Coptic markers, whatever floats your boat, get it out and just do 15 minutes. Put a timer on. Do 15 minutes. Make sure you get in there and do it. But of course, the more you create, the more likely you're going to create that masterpiece. Just like Bach, the more he created. We don't listen to all the creations that Bach did they did not all stand the test of time but he made so many and in them there were those who stood the test of time and to understand that as a as a professional artist as someone who wants to be successful in their work you know you don't you don't camp around your mistakes and go oh this is terrible i've done a terrible job and you don't camp around your successes and go, wow, this is phenomenal. I've done so well here. Look at this. Look how great I am. They just kept moving. There was no time to stop. There was no time to be admired. There was no time for that. It's time for the next piece of work. Keep working. Keep producing. The more you create, the more likely you will create your masterpiece. Bach was also very strategic. He was focused on his goals, he had a career, he had a job, he had to provide for his family, he had to put food on the table, and he knew in order to do that, he had to be strategic. He knew what he wanted and he had to be focused on building a, a great reputation as a musician and focused on creating 
earning money. So he was strategic. Be strategic. Does that mean you have to reassess what you do? Maybe. Maybe you're not being strategic enough. But Buck, even through all his strategy, no one can say that the quality of his work wasn't great. He could, through his strategy, through his um, constant production of making art, making music, he created great works. So be strategic. Think about it. I have a friend called Lily Nova. She's a, a phenomenal artist. And she said to me when she started out, she looked at what is it that people would like to have? What kind of art are people interested? And in that, can my skill set fit this? Do I have what it takes to create that art? And then she said, do I want to make that art? Is that something I want to be doing? So she looked at it. She was a very strategic. Three things. What do people want to buy? Can I actually do it? Do I want to do it? And then she just immersed herself in it. Great artist. I'll put her link down below as well. So these are the kind of things we need to be strategic in what we do and create works that will endure. You know, that's another thing. Uh, if we can have a bit of fun and create things that are for today, for right now. Um, and some of those things do sometimes in, endure the test of time because they're kind of a, um, a moment, a, a time capsule of what's happening at that time. So, for example, you know, there was at the beginning of COVID-19, there was a lot of toilet paper art. And it was fun and, it was, you know, lots of people got into it, you know, painting um, toilet paper paper rolls and it was that was fine it was great but that's not going to endure the test of time that's not going to be what people are going to put on their walls and want to have it up it could be fun for now it could be fun for the next couple of years to have something like that a talking point and you can say i'll remember those times during COVID 19 but down the track you want work that's going to endure the test of time you want work that's lasting like mcginnis wrote this article 10 years ago, I believe it's endured the time. 10 years later, I'm finding it highly relevant. So the link is below. Make sure you read it. Read his um, blog. It's a great blog. I'll link um, the other artist I've referred to in my chat today. Thank you for joining me today on the Artist Chat Room. I really enjoyed that you are able to come and hear what I have to say. And I just hope that you are able to reach the next level in your art career and your art business. And have a great week and stay creative. Bye for now.